So as you can see, this wheel is fully spinning and this wheel and that wheel and our far wheel are just staying stationary, just like we thought. What is going on today, guys? My name's Alex. Welcome back to the freaking channel. Today, we're talking about the differences between a classical four-wheel drive system vehicle and an all-wheel drive vehicle. You guys seem to be liking the four-wheel drive content, so I figured we'd go over a big one. All-wheel drive versus four-wheel drive. What exactly are the mechanical differences between the two systems? This is not an all-wheel drive system. This is a four-wheel drive system. However, my good friend Ryan has an all-wheel drive vehicle which we will be reviewing today. All right, today we're here with my good friend, Ryan, a fellow diesel mechanic. He's got his Audi Quattro all roads, nice little wagon. And we're gonna use his Audi to compare the all wheel drive system to my power wagon in a more traditional four x four or four wheel drive system. drive system can be a little bit more complex than your standard four-wheel drive system and it seems like a lot of manufacturers these days are coming out with a lot more all-wheel drive systems or full-time four-wheel drive systems for even you know smaller SUVs but the main idea is that power can be delivered to all four wheels in any driving situation now I'm gonna call this Audi a real or a true all-wheel drive system because there's always power going to the front axle and the rear axle here. Whereas a lot of these so-called all-wheel drive vehicles are really more part-time four-wheel drive vehicles where if there is a slippage detected in either the front axle or the rear axle, power will be then sent to the opposite axle. So that's not really an all-wheel drive system. An all-wheel drive system always has power going to your front and rear axle at all times, no matter what driving condition. Now, if that's not making sense, don't worry. We're gonna go over that in just a little bit when I talk about four-wheel drive auto in terms of my Ram pickup truck. Now, there is one component that allows this Audi to have a real all-wheel drive system, and it's a fact that it has a third differential. Um, it has not one, not two, but actual three differentials or a center differential, and that's what allows this vehicle to always have power going to both the front axle and the rear axle without binding up on the road. So in a traditional four wheel drive setup, if the vehicle was locked in four wheel drive and you were driving in a circle on dry pavement, the drive line would actually skip and bind. This doesn't happen with this vehicle because the third differential actually takes up the slack between both the front axle and the rear axle in what's called the center differential there. So as you guys can hear, there's really no binding of the drive line here. So he's cranked all the way over and the wheels are not chirping. There's no gravel getting displaced. It's just a very easy drive here going round and round. Whereas when my truck's in four wheel drive, it's very obvious to hear the drive line binding up and the wheels skipping along. So you guys can see that this wheel is actually skipping along because the drive line is binding up. Skip, skip, skip. So let's get underneath my truck here and it might be a little bit easier for me to demonstrate what's going on and why that drive line is binding. So this right here is my transfer case and the reason why this truck was binding is because, you guys can see we have my front drive shaft right there and we have my rear drive shaft going into the transfer case right there. So these two drive shafts, this one and this one right here, are both going to be spinning at different speeds when the truck is turning. And when the transfer case is locked, meaning that the front drive shaft and the rear drive shaft are locked to each other, and there's differences in speeds of those drive shafts, either the transfer case is gonna explode or what's gonna happen is we're gonna see a wheel skip along and that's exactly what we saw. Now the Audi does not have a locking transfer case. It has a center differential in its place and that center differential takes up slack. It allows both of those drive line, the front and the rear drive lines to have different speeds without binding. Now four wheel drive auto, like I mentioned earlier, 
is basically when the transfer case is locking and unlocking whenever there's wheel slippage detected. This power wagon doesn't have that feature, but any truck or vehicle that does have four wheel drive auto or a system that automatically transfers power to different wheels whenever there's slippage detected, is gonna most likely have some kind of clutch pack system in a transfer case. Now four wheel drive auto and systems like that are really not all wheel drive systems. They certainly act like them and they do come to basically the same results, um, but technically they are not really an all wheel drive system. Another key difference with an all wheel drive system versus a four wheel drive system is that no one wheel is locked to another wheel. So if we were to lift this wheel, for example, off the ground, it would spin freely despite all other wheels being attached to the drive line and mechanically being attached to this wheel. The center differential allows this wheel to spin freely independently of all other wheels despite being all attached to the same drive line. So we have one wheel off the ground here and like I just mentioned this wheel is 100% attached to all the other wheels on the vehicle through the drive line and she just spins freely just like that. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna put the car in drive. I bet you that this car isn't gonna go anywhere and it's just gonna spin this wheel. So we'll see what happens. Oh yeah. So as you can see, this wheel is fully spinning and this wheel and that wheel and our far wheel are just staying stationary just like we thought. Now, if you were to try that with my truck, it would be going sent right through that window because the front drive line and the rear drive line are 100% locked to each other. With an all wheel drive system, yes, the, the wheels are all on the same drive line. However, there is not one wheel that is locked to another. They're all kind of spinning independently. And that is what that third differential does so well. So now what we'll do is we will lift the same wheel we did with the Audi and we will see when this truck is in four wheel drive, if we can get that wheel to spin or if it's gonna be locked to the rest of the drive line. So the truck actually had to be on in order to keep it in neutral, but as you guys can see here, we are in four wheel drive high. As you guys can see, the wheel in the air isn't going to spin while this truck's in four wheel drive because this rear wheel is locked to the front wheels and the front wheels are still on the ground. So we'll put the truck back in two wheel drive and that rear wheel should be able to spin freely now. Now the only way I'm gonna be able to get this wheel to actually spin on its own in four wheel drive is if I jack up the front end here. So what I've done is I've lifted this wheel right here. So we'll fire the truck up, put it in neutral, and we will spin this wheel and you'll see that this wheel also spins. So if we go back to when we were turning this truck outside in the yard, we saw that the inside rear tire was skipping along. And now hopefully that kind of makes some sense as to why, because that tire is physically locked to the front axle. And in this case, this wheel. So if you picture this wheel is going to be on the outside and it's going to be spinning a lot faster than the inside tire over here. Those two wheels are locked to each other. So either the transfer case explodes or power is driven into this wheel and actually makes it skip along. Whereas as we saw the all wheel drive vehicle had that third differential to allow both of those drive lines to rotate at different speeds and not cause binding. So I hope you guys liked the video. If you did, don't forget to leave that thumbs up and if you like cool stuff like this, don't forget to subscribe, guys. We'd love to have you on board. Anyways, enough of me. We'll see you in the next freaking video.